I know wanted you to learn the camera. Exactly. I'm not ready yeah. for you to turn into Mr. Uh, these. Wow, Spielberg. those are some amazing creative shots. I mean, right. you're ready to film a Wes Anderson movie. Uh, you know, yeah. we're not trying to get you there on first assignment. We're trying I to get you of, to know the camera. And while I ago, I was laughing. Like I was laughing because he did the super and... <laughs> He says water drinker. I know. <laughs> I know. I love it. Everything about it was funny. Man. It was very Harvey. I thought I'd put a little put a little little yeah, little dash in there. For me, I'm I'm more of like the front end of it. I'm just making it up. Of a similar nature or character. JM cast. J J J, J M cast. But we get shocked often by Chris. You Google my name, it always pulls up Ric Flair and Blackjack Mulligan. That's another story for another time. Though. Hello, we're live from Rick's studio here in <laughs> Fake, Texas. It's a JM cast. I'm Greg T. Johnson. I am Rick. I'm not even going to do my middle name because whatever. But you find Rick Allen Mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently we have someone on the phone. Who's on the phone? Howdy, guys. This is Harvey calling in from my studio, which is just my room. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we have all of us here. Oh, Chris is in here, but that's all right. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Next time. Um, But yeah, Harvey, how's it going? It's going well. I just have been doing a ton of editing and uh, getting the hang of editing these podcasts. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. And um, I guess as we're about to discover, I had an assignment. You did. Um, you want to, we gave yeah, Harvey a production assignment. It was Greg to... Greg gave him homework. I gave him homework. We want him to, we want him to learn the gear. We yeah. want him to learn the camera. You saw the unveiling where he got his uh, all his gear and got to open it up like a, a, a young lad at Christmas. And he was quite excited seeing it all. And um, anyway, I said, well, the best way to get to know it is to use it. So I'm like, here's an assignment. And he wasted no time to use the camera for his own yes. uses. <laughs> yes, apparently. Which he, I was yes. like, okay, well, well played, sir. And it was funny. So that was good because he has a great. What's your YouTube channel, Harvey? This is my name, Harvey Mulvihill. The last name is spelled M U L V I H I L L. You guys got to check it check out. It it's, out. It's like movie reviews, comedy stuff. It's fun. But yeah, well, well, well like you said, I was a like, kid on Christmas morning. And what does a kid do with his new toys? He, he plays with them. So I was like, ooh, maybe I can make a video. <laughs> there you go. So he made a video, um, which Touché. is really funny. It's a movie review on the movie what, Fall. Yeah, it's called Fall. It came out this a couple weeks ago. And uh, evidently the movie's terrible. However, Harvey does something in his movie review that I want him to do in all movie reviews going forward. And he refers to the actor by another, like, instead of saying, like, Patrick Stewart, he's like, so Professor Xavier shows up. But he d uses other names, and it's oh, yeah. awesome. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you liked that. That was, like, that was a fun little touch. Like, I want you to so badly to do Bullet Train and refer to Brad Pitt as a different and like every time, just a di like, oh, and then Rusty came in, and then, oh, this came in, and just different yeah, names every from time. Yeah, all his different movies, just yeah, a different, yeah, whole, yeah. whole different character. Like, and Tyler Durden showed up, <laughs> and then Tyler Durden <laughs> and Domino had to fight, you know, because it would just be hilarious. Anyway, um, so he had a homework assignment. Yes. Uh, I have watched said homework assignment, uh, and it is Harvey through and through. Oh, good. It is very this Harvey. Is, and so we'll, we'll, everyone else will get to see why we chose Harvey. And... My biggest critique of it is that he wasn't with another person that he could be behind the camera. Right. But I love the fact that he's on camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he does some he does some things, but I want you to watch it. You haven't watched it yet. No. And I want to get your feedback that you're going to give him. I've given him some feedback. Okay. And I want to see how close have, we are in critique. I also have just some general questions, so I'm, I'm curious. Oh, perfect. perfect. I'm curious for you to see it first. Yeah. Sounds perfect. Like this is a perfect. So you, should be able, you have to hover and hit. So, yeah. Uh, and hopefully y'all can see it. If you can't, I will superimpose it out, out in a post. Hey everyone, my name is Harvey Mulvihill and today I'll be showing you how to fill up and drink a glass of water.
The way I see it, there are three main steps. So step one, of course, is to get your cup. I'll be using this one for this demonstration. Step two is to get ice in your cup. I love the music. And step three is to fill it up with water. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video informative. I had a lot of fun making it. Cheers. Awesome. Awesome. Hey everyone. Oh. My name is nope. Harvey through and through. Do it again. Harvey <laughs> through and through. <laughs> no, I thought that was quite good. You liked it? Yeah. Um so you see where I was like, I wish he had a second another person doing the acts. So we yes, could, yes. from so a can, tech, I was thinking technically, so he much could focus more. on the action itself versus correct um, doing it and making sure. I mean, honestly, what he did having to do it himself is twice as hard as having absolutely someone else doing it for him. Absolutely. So that's part of why I did it. Kind of, I, I kind of told him to do it on his own. It didn't I, Harvey? Yeah. Well, I, I think I maybe the that. original idea was. I'm not, I'm not sure if the, the parameters are that specified, but I just didn't have anyone at the house at the moment. So I was like, well, I mean, this is a good skill to learn, too. I'm not going to be in front of the camera for any reason. True. So, yeah, I mean, that's a I, – I just have a basically my, my main general question is how on earth do you keep focus without autofocus if you're trying to point the camera and then step in front of it? Because, I, I mean, I, I, well, you saw there that little interview thing was my fourth – or fifth take right because they were all out of focus yep and i had the uh monitor facing my way the whole time it looked fine on the monitor but then i would plug it into the computer and it was no good um well i mean <laughs> other than you putting something in the exact spot that you're going to stand yeah because i mean so what what you could do is say put like an uh, an x mark or something or with tape chair, or, or some, chair or something something big yeah, like if you, for example, if you were sitting down, you could have put put uh, the chair in its place, and then when you could have put something else in the chair to focus on, yeah. and that would that possibly. I mean, either way, I mean it's kind of like it's kind of like when we do the podcast with Dana. You know, he we're we're trying to get kind of a a rough estimate of the the focus with the camera that I use, we use on him and when he's not there. And I tend to go for me, I, I focus on the mic and then I back off the focus between the mic and the chair. And then I kind of come in the middle. Yep. And okay. unfortunately with the type of cameras that you're using, focus is very, and, and it's more the lens than the camera. Right. Um, focus is just very, it's, it's tight. Like you yeah. don't have a lot of playroom. Yeah, there's not a lot of weight room. It, yeah. So, um, but I thought overall, I I thought you did a really outstanding job on that video. I agree, hundred percent. So how long did you? How long did it take you to shoot? Shooting, like I said, took took quite some time just because I had to do a, a bunch of takes. I think if I had, if I could have, I mean, this is, the whole point of this thing is to figure is to figure figure out how to use the camera. So. Right. I mean, um, it took a couple of hours, but it was just me finicking with it and pointing at things and then like uh, uh, lining up shots, trying to see what looked good and sort of mapping it out in my head, like what it would, what it would look like in Premiere. I know Rick, uh, Rick mentioned when he saw it that uh, th there's opportunities for a lot more in insert shots, right. like close-ups on things. Yep. So that's definitely gonna, that's something I'm going to be keeping in mind in the in the future. Yep. So my my biggest again hard to do on your own. Right. My biggest critique was that he was flying solo. Um, Asher's trying to make an appearance on our show, so if you hear that, yeah, that's there's my dog. maybe some dog barking. <laughs> Sorry. We, we may even hear it on Harvey's side. That's, yeah, well, I, was, I, I, just, I just moved rooms because I was worried about my. Um, if your dog hears the, our, the dogs over here, we might just have dog mayhem <laughs> go hard. Uh, uh, so it was uh -oh. the fact that he wasn't able to get certain <laughs> nice way to go. Um, Greg. <laughs> certain elements because he was doing the shooting to where if he was someone else was doing the acts, he could get those tighter shots. Right. And my biggest thing was, um, and I liked what he did, especially that there was two different angles of the glass being filled, but I would have liked to have seen the glass getting pulled out of the cabinet 
the, rest, the yes. you know, I'm choosing this. I mean, there's you know, plenty things, more extra shots you could have included. Do I think you did a bad job? Absolutely not. Not at no. all. For a, I mean, you for did a the first assignment. assignment it was yes. good. It, yep. You didn't do anything that I wouldn't have liked to have seen. Now, next time, if it's the same thing, I'm going to sit there and say, okay, we're not growing and that's problematic, but right. you, you're not that person. We've, we already know that with you. So we I know wanted you to learn the camera. Exactly. I'm not ready yeah. for you to turn into Mr. Uh, these. Wow. Spielberg. Those are some amazing creative shots. I mean, right. you're ready to film the Wes Anderson movie. Uh, you know, we're not trying to get you there on first assignment. We're trying to I get you to uh, know the camera. And while I ago, I was laughing. I was laughing because he did the super and <laughs> he says water drinker. I know. <laughs> I know. I love it. <laughs> Everything about it was funny. Man. It was very Harvey. I thought I'd put a little, put a little, little, yeah, little dash in there. But, but um, so I think, I think generally just with like, like you guys were saying earlier, having a, a subject mm -hmm. that I could point a camera at, not just for focus, but, but for like more, more dynamic shots, moving the, moving the camera and, you know, being able to, do it. I, I, I can foresee myself doing, being able to do a lot more with an actual person in front of me instead of just on a type of tripod. Yeah. So, like, things to think about, like, for, you know, if we were to give you another assignment, which we will, it would be things like, you know, stuff, stuff, especially stuff you can do around the house, like washing dishes or folding laundry, things that have a repetitiveness to them. Right. Because that's what you want to start to, you're going to start to want to look at as your shooting technique develops is like, to get better, to help you train your mind of like, when I'm shooting something, what am I looking for? And it's like, you know, when you've done a story like Greg and I've done millions, he's done millions, I've done a couple thousand. And it's like, you're looking, you're, you're starting to look in your head of like, okay, I know they're going to do this. So I need to be ready for that. So that's the kind of what we're trying to get the ball rolling so that your mind is like, okay, I know I need this, but I need to get this too. And you start to think ahead. Right. But I mean, this video wasn't, to get him there. No, not at all. Uh, of course this, not. This was no, a, no, 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 no. And 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 what I'm so Im impressed by this. So so the actual assignment was I told I told Harvey because we want him to learn the camera. Yep. And he has a microphone. I wanted yep. him to be using the microphone, yep. know how to use it, know yep. how to be able to control it, and all that. Yep. And he used he did all the things that I asked yep. him to do, which I said I want you to. You know, I, I'm, I want you to give me the steps on how to drink of water from the beginning to the end. And he told a story. And tell a story. Exactly. And he did it like it's a little, uh, I mean, we, we could we could put that on YouTube and put it on how to drink, how to, how to, how to. <laughs> All right, we're putting that on YouTube. Pour and drink. A, you'd be surprised. Harvey, I'm putting oh, it on YouTube. totally going on JMK. <laughs> With your permission, Harvey. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank um, you. so what, um, what did you learn the most while doing it? The focus thing, I know I've already mentioned it, but that was my biggest hurdle by far. And easily the thing that I learned that took, took the most away from is that it's, it's not just point you shoot. You really have to, to work with it. And it's also, um, kind of deceptive when you're, when you're far away from the camera, right. looking into the monitor, you need to be right up in there just to, you know, to see what you're working with. Does his camera um, have the focus assist or no? Um, I don't believe he has a, he doesn't have a Sony lens. Okay. He has a Sigma lens and okay. it was before Sigma was, because gotcha. right now, if you buy a, a, the newest models of Sigma, right. they have partnered with sony so it has the focus assist to, yes okay they have them and there's two uh, there's two companies outside of sony that are okay. doing that now with them i forget i the people at garland camera told me gotcha so harvey if you ever notice when you look at greg's camera when we're on shoot days how it has that red outline around everything yes that's the focus assist kicking in yeah. that's, that's oh no his camera has focus assist that's what i'm saying but, i don't know but, if his lens the and the lens i don't think Right. He could he could see if it does it. I just don't know how accurate right. it would be. Gotcha. So I think, also, I think maybe it's going to be helpful to shoot with a background because if you look at the video, I was shooting with like, I mean, the, the sink was in the background, but it was five or ten feet behind me. Right. So there's just in, empty space behind me. So it was kind of hard to, to find, you know, the red. I mean, you're framing on that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Never yeah. mind. I was thinking differently as you said that. Another thing I'm impressed by is that um, – when you shot yourself talking in front of, into the camera, you, you have the tripod, you, you, you were smart enough to do the tripod to where the shot is level 
you weren't you're, you're not like looking up and you just did that naturally i didn't tell you to do that but you i think it, I think did it, it might literally be the highest possible setting well <laughs> That's why I gave you that tripod. <laughs> I gave you that tripod because it has... Now, you sure there's not like a, a center pole that you can also raise? Oh, you're right. You're right. Har- Harvey 6'7". Right. Yes, who's for not anyone aware. that doesn't know, Harvey is our he's our gentle giant. He is six, not seven. But yeah, the, uh, the you're, you're right about the center pole. I've forgotten about that. that yeah. That's what I started with, and I was like, oh, no, I'm going to need... I'm gonna need some more. So then I, I brought the legs out. No, but you, you did it. Down. You did it properly, to where the shot is level and it's not looking up. It's framed well too. Like and it's, it's not. Yeah, the, the, and it's the not looking down. Rule of thirds is pretty yeah. well followed there. Yep. Yep. Um, no, I mean, again, I literally saw it for the first time while doing this podcast, and I'm impressed. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, it means a lot. So when you're yeah, so so. That's because I know your background. When you're doing, yes, yeah, so like when you're framing something like that, are you trying? I mean, obviously, you know where you're going to stand, but is that your, was your thought of like, okay, I'm going to be here to make sure that, that it's, or were you, were you cognizant of where you were putting yourself? Is what I'm asking. Uh, that that is something I didn't think twice about. I I I, I should have put some thought into that, but all, all I was thinking was that I wanted the background of the sink. But I mean, I don't think you can even see the sink in the background. No, so. no, you're, I wasn't. You're covering. You're you're, you're framed well. I, I was I was kind of talking about like. Oh, I see. I'm I'm not looking at it. I because he's talking to the camera. It works. Yeah. So like, if you were doing something more interview style, I would have suggested setting it up a different way. But that still works because you're talking to the camera directly. Right. We'll go over that later. Maybe, but even even with the, I could have done that interview anywhere. I could have done it in front of a wall, which again would have helped with the the uh, focus thing. But well, avoid anyway, flat walls though. For next time, we can figure it out. You could have been sitting at the table. Yeah. Try and avoid flat. Right, flat colored down. walls because it gets a little boring. You want to have a little texture, like sitting down, da- sitting down at the table. I don't. I mean, I don't know what the room generally looks like, but it looks like a. It's a larger kitchen area that might have like a little bre- breakfast nook breakfast. area that you yes, could have a table, is. and then because that would be the good place where you could have been sitting down, and then the sink could have been kind of over your shoulder or something, and then you would see it versus you standing up. But I mean, these are now we're talking about we're nitpicky about creativity of of how you did it versus right the actual doing it and i i wanted you to focus more on just it being clean and being smooth and like i mean you the edits were good there wasn't jump cuts i mean dude i'm telling you you avoided the major sins. i was impressed you you literally Thank avoided you. the major sins of jump cuts and yes. um it just flo- is it, I mean, is it, so this is this is a bit of a tangent, but is, is it isn't it interesting to you guys that I mean I, I live and breathe YouTube as you as you know, and it's just part of the YouTube style to just include jump cuts like that. And yeah. I mean, there's there's some people that hide them, but m- many many YouTubers, I would say, in the majority, just keep oh, them especially out. standing right in front of camera sta- saying something. That's like right. so common for just people to cut cut whatever they're cutting. And then not even a dissolve, like literally just cut, cut, cut. And you see their head bouncing around. Yeah, I, I mean, that is very YouTube. I don't have a problem with it. it, it it's contextual. I think for, for me, it's based on what the information is being delivered. Like when you're doing your movie reviews, I don't care if there's jump cuts. I get what you're doing. Right. You're, you're editing out garbage and you're putting together what you think works. It's when you're doing it's something like the- this, it's a little more storytelling that I, mm-hmm. I don't want to see a jump cut because I want to see it clean. You know, it's different when it's, you know, oh, I'm talking about a movie and you're going to sit there and, but, you know, edit, edit like crazy. I, unfortunately, am a person who can't stand jump cuts, so I'll just cover them up. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's a perfect time for this. Word of the day. Word of the day. Word of the day. Word of the day. I like it. All right. Well, that is now officially word of the day. Intro music for word of the day. Jump. Cuts. I was going to say, let me guess, it's jump cut. <laughs> <laughs> we only talked about it like, you know, 20 times or more in this particular episode. So we might as well tell people what a jump cut is. Uh, um, oh, Rick goes, go for it, Greg. <laughs> I thought you'd have that one. Mr. Editor, that actually, the editor on staff at WFA uh, does not want to, he doesn't want to go to the jump cut. Jump cut, it, I mean, it can be many things. Yeah. But very often it is, um, it's basically a, an edit that uh, 
I mean, God, there's so many different types of jump cuts. I mean, to me, a jump cut is when, when someone's talking and you've taken a section of their talking out and the head changes and adjusts. Well, that's one type of jump cut. Yeah. Or sometimes in editing, too, you your, your shot is the same and you edit to the next shot, which is ex- exactly the same, but just in a maybe frame slightly differently or similar. And, yeah. and, and sometimes they, people even refer sometimes jump cut as when people cross axis and, and are, <laughs> we'll get to that later. Shots, Harvey. But, access but that's a whole, mess, yeah. yeah, we're not, we're not going <laughs> to, that'll really, we're not going to go with access. <laughs> that'll really that, Harvey, but, throw you for a loop. Um, anyway, jump cuts are, uh, and the thing is you can use jump cuts. You can use jump cuts to, to actually, kind of help tell your story i love well executed jump cuts in terms of like quick flash edits they're uh they're they're great for passage of time yes same shot and this is a person in two different locations jump jump it's 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 yep yep Yep. and i i i do what i call the jump dissolve quite often in in storytelling oh yeah you do i i use that often (laughs) the jump you explain that the jump dissolve i mean it's like that what you just said the only difference is I put a little dissolve in it. And for example, you might have like a woman walking down a road and then you show her kind of close to the camera and then you show her far from uh, kind of medium from the camera and then you see her way down the street. So you have all these different perspectives of that. But since it takes like however long it takes for her to a get a minute from, and a half for her to go from one to the being other in front of the camera to all the way down the street, you, you um, kind of just uh dissolve between those Got two it. and it just Got it, it I it's a little smoother than a jump cut and that's it. I've seen people do that both ways, but I I'm I just like saying me better. personally, I tend to do the jump dissolve a lot. I for just kind of my style. I, I just hide edits. It's just I've kind of just been ingrained to hide edits. And people like people like to do it like to kind of give it that ghostly look. The Oh uh, that'll work too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, also very movie, very movie trailer. The fade to bl- fade to black in between every shot. Yes. Kind of yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's the same current, thing. I can't remember when movies didn't do that. Can we go back to the days when they didn't do that? Like, hey, Harvey, did you see the movie Nope? Yes. What did you think Twice of Nope? Twice. Oh, so, uh, he saw it once for me. <laughs> <laughs> did you happen to listen to episode ten of the JM Cast? Yeah, you guys were talking about it. You said, or I, I didn't listen to the whole thing. But I know Someone just saying. saved his job. What is the JM cast? <laughs> and it's been nice working with you, Harvey. Take care. Click. I think I fired Harvey like eight times already. <laughs> yeah, um, he, uh, so he just I'll, keeps I'll, hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> The signal's awful. I don't know what's going on. It's crazy. <laughs> wait, wait, what do you say? Let me call you later. <laughs> um, the first time I saw Nope, I didn't care for it much, and the second time I saw it, I really liked it. Okay. I mean, I understand that. What did you think? I, I, well, let's go back to the first time you saw it. What did you think about how it opened? Uh, the, the the chimp attack. Yes, but on the sitcom, were you like going like me, going, "What the heck is going on, and what does this have to do with where we're going?" Because like, the trailers made you go, "This is about aliens or something," and then you're watching a chimp attack people. Like, where does this go? I was all for it. I, I thought that I thought that opening was uh, was pretty chilling. Honestly. Harvey likes simian violence. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big I'm a big horror head, but uh, oh, okay. I mean, not not huge, but I like horror movies well enough, and I think I think just it was pretty effective, and I think it all it all comes together in the end pretty it, well. Yeah, it, it gets there, but uh, yeah. it, it it definitely is, it explains it explains one of the most jarring images that was in the trailer all along that I kept going, "What is that?" The hand? No, the woman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. she was because they showed her in the trailer, like all you, you get what I'm saying. Yes, absolutely. And it was always in the trailer, and I'm like, "What? What is that? Is she? Is yeah. that? Is is this like? Is I never so I could. Really, I couldn't really figure out exactly because uh, the, thematically, what he's going for, I think, is they're exploit. They're you know they're exploiting 
the chimp and then our main characters are exploiting this. I mean, are we in sp- spoiler territory here? I haven't seen it. Oh, I'm we're not, way I'm not a big, he has, I'm not a big fan. Rick is of, not. I'll keep, it, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it vague. Yeah. Um, both, both parties are exploiting uh, an animal of yeah. some kind. Okay. And uh, and so like that's that's the, the 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 thematic through line, right? But then I was like, why is that? I mean, she was in a she was she was an actress, I guess, in the in a sitcom, and she got her face ripped off by the monkey. Yeah. Right. And then um, she was there again. I'm like, is it? Is she really? She's a victim, I guess. She hasn't learned her lesson or whatever. Yeah. But then I read an online comment that was like, uh, she's still when she's at the no spoilers, but the place. Greg knows what I'm talking about later yep. in the movie. Um, she's wearing the shirt, the sitcom shirt still. She's yeah. still wearing the, but so that she's still in the mode of like, I used to be this person, you know? Interesting. Well, he had, she's, she's he had all the memorabilia. If you remember. Yes. And if you remember, he introduces her as, as his first love. Yes. So he's like, and, and everyone, I want, I want everyone to know that my, my first crush is here and everyone like claps. I, right, I might. You guys have me intrigued enough. To know. <laughs> Look, is it? It's, it's not scary, right? Oh uh, no! It's a, it's it's like uh, signs. If you've seen uh, signs, see, it'll it'll remind you. It 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 is Jordan Peele's sign. See, here's what I find interesting that's about Jordan scary. Peele. I literally heard a writer from um, uh, one of the shows he was on back in the day. Matt, I think he was a writer on. He was on Mad TV or something like that. And one of the writers on Mad TV is like, I never realized that Jordan Peele would be he what he was because he was just a stoner who used to annoy everybody. Like he would come to set okay. and like go to the writer's room and he would just be baked out of his skull and the guys would just be like, go away. And he's like, and now he's the big, like literally the most sought after director in Hollywood. So basically he was the sister. That's exactly right. That's <laughs> right? That's right? That's exactly right. He yes. was the sister. He was right. I might have to see this like now. A, a perfect, he, he wrote. He writes all his movies too, so I'm sure that was an insert of him, kind of just like ran, annoying. Would it be hilarious stuff. if he heard that interview? It was with uh, Joe Stapleton. If Joe Stapleton, if he heard that interview and was just like, "Oh yeah, Stapes, here you go." <laughs> <laughs> it's wild to me that you can go back and watch Key and Peele videos from like six or seven, like eight years ago or something. Like, it's not even that long ago. Like that was less than that five or six. They got paid well for that show for that second season too. But it's so funny watching him be a goofball, and then he's like this auteur director now. It's crazy yeah. to me that they that they they stopped that show when they did because they could have kept going. Yeah, very very Dave Chappelle of them. Well, Dave <laughs> Dave Chappelle's reason for quitting is much more interesting to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, thanks for joining the Nope conversation, Harvey. Uh, I, I'm really glad to have finally got. Hey, maybe we got Rick on board finally. Uh, to go see Dude, it, Rick, Rick. You should you should watch it. I, I told my parents it has some horror movie people. They, I'm, I'm like, it's it's very like, it's got like the like Spielberg. It's comedy. very cinematic. It's like, okay. Very cinematic. Okay. It's beautifully shot. It's all, it's worth seeing. But it's I mean the closest thing to as far as like scary horror the closest thing to it would be signs all right all right that's all a great right. comparison and there and, the, and there's there's plenty of moments that aren't like all right I you're you. freaking out yeah okay you know it's kind funny of, too there's tons, there's oh tons of no yeah there is lots of comedy in it okay all right for sure um should we give harvey an, an assignment for next time uh sure i'm gonna let rick give the assignment though yeah i knew that was happening no, I'm trying to think of like. I, well, I was gonna say I, I want. I would. I would really want him to try and have us a, a person to help him, and I don't want to have to handcuff him though. Right. I, I I can I can make that happen for sure. I'll just use my brother and my okay. parents or something. Ha, I want either either how to wash dishes or how to fold laundry, preferably towels. I didn't. I didn't hear the first one. Laundry or what? Wash dishes or wash fold dishes. laundry, and you want them to be the talent. This yeah, we time. need. We you need another tent because I want you to focus on all the shots. Yeah. and change the angles. Don't make it so like obvious angles all the time. Yeah, and if you want to voice it over or something and not have them tell the story, I don't have a problem with that. I just want to see the the action of how to and show it being done. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a plan. And that's With that, going to be time to go. A wrap up on this next JM cast. Harvey, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me guys. Uh, tell yeah. your friends to like, share and subscribe to JM cast and you can hear And good job, more, Harvey. Uh, yeah. Great job, Harvey. And you can hear subscribe, more uh, comment, all that fun stuff. TV information. Yeah.
We out.